Welcome to Hell Talk. I'm Dr. Manny. Jane Seymour is known for her roles as a Bond girl, a doctor on the new frontier, and even a wedding crasher. But the award-winning actress is also an accomplished artist, philanthropist, and proud mother. With this impressive resume spanning more than 45 years, Jane knows a thing or two about longevity. Indeed, you do. <laughs> you are beautiful. Thank, Thank you, you for being here. All right, I want to get right to it. Um, everybody says, I had a friend the other day who says to me, Manny, life begins at 50. Uh, what is your secret on being so beautiful and so healthy and so well put together? Um, what do you do? What's your routine? Well, I, I do everything in moderation, number mm -hmm. one. I don't smoke, never have, never will. Um, I have a little coffee in the morning. I get up pretty early. I work out at least three times a week. I do a combination of uh, light weights, Pilates, gyrotonics, spins, spinning. And if I'm doing spinning, I use the TRX straps or, or light weights. So I've always got every part of my body working. Right. Um, I, I grow my own organic vegetables and fruits. I eat fresh fruits and vegetables. We even have our own chickens and eggs. So you cook yourself many I, times? I cook a lot of times. I, I like very clean kind of food, but I'm never obsessed with it. Right. Um, I happen to like, I don't, not a big dessert lover, but I'll always have a piece of dark chocolate at the end of the day. Right. And, um, and I love wine, but I don't have too much of it. So there you go. <laughs> not like me, <laughs> but I'm not aging gracefully. <laughs> gracefully. Um, but you, you've been open very, you know, you, you've been open very much about the process of aging. And, and I think mm. that for a lot of people, they, you know, they get stuck in a number and then they get all worried. And it seems to me that aside from your routine of exercise and balancing your meals and things like that, you also exercise your mind. You have a very well-balanced state of being. I, I, you know, I know this. Well, thank you. I, you know, I'm, I'm a doctor's daughter. <laughs> doctor's daughters never think about being sick or acknowledge it because they're not supposed to ever be sick. It's just never mentioned, as you probably know. Right. Um, but I've always been a great believer in listening to, to your body. And I've always kind of been an advocate for a combination of alternative and Western medicine. And I really, you know, believe that if what you feed your body with and the way you it's very important. So, what, so you know, in today's society, they, a lot of women become obsessed mm. with this aging process, and it seems to bring on a lot of anxiety for them, and a lot of depression, and a lot of sadness. Oh, this dress doesn't fit anymore, and that becomes a whole issue, or look at me, I just had a baby, and how am I going to, you know, all of these things. Uh, it's, all about, it's all about external factors, and I really am a great believer that it, beauty comes from within. Right. And uh, I think, you know, um, my mother taught me very well. She always said, you know, darling, there's, there's always other people worse off than you. Right. And um, if you can give back and help other people, it will help you. And, you know, that's really very much my mantra. Which is a great segue into what I wanted to ask you, which is uh, you have so many charities. Let's talk about the Open Heart Foundation. Mm. What is that? Well, I have been involved with a number of different charities over the years, um, mostly with child abuse and um, children's based charities. But I went to Africa with the American Red Cross, who I'm on the celebrity panel for. And uh, I came back and I realized that I wanted, didn't want to just start a new charity, a new foundation. I wanted to have something that really um, encouraged other foundations and really kind of spotlighted people that have taken a challenge in their own lives mm -hmm. and used that as a platform, as an opportunity to help other people. So, for example, with our open hearts, what we did is we, we for example, uh, one of our first honorees was Robin Roberts, a perfect example. Right. Here's someone who could very easily have just said, you know, I'm taking time off, I'm sick and, you know, leave me alone. But right. instead of which, she opened the door for everyone to be able to express and share, you know, the ups and downs and for people who are going through, through cancer to, you know, to have some hope. And so um, every year we honor four people um, with our foundation. And who are the honor raises? Well, this year we've got Kimberly Williams Paisley, who's uh, talking about dementia and specifically caregivers dealing with dementia. Mm -hmm. Her mother has uh, dementia. Wow. Uh, we've also actually made a movie. Um, she, she's being um, presented by Kim Campbell, Glenn Campbell's wife. And right. we've just finished a documentary that's going out this year called I'll Be Me about Glenn Campbell and uh, his last tour where he was able to say goodbye to his fans as he had announced he had Alzheimer's. Right. Then we have Derek Hall, who um, 
is um, the head of the Diamondbacks in Arizona. He had prostate cancer and he started a foundation and he's helping countless people with, with prostate cancer. We have Travis Mills. He's this uh, young guy that uh, came up from Afghanistan and lost all four limbs. Right. And with a big smile on his face and enormous enthusiasm, he goes out there and what is he doing? He's helping other yeah, veterans yeah, come back. Course. And as he says, you know, it, it's not the limbs you lose, it's what happens to you psychologically. That's the toughest part. And as we know, we lose so many so many young men and women when they come back because they just can't handle Absolutely. what they've been through. Absolutely. And then we have Lauren uh, Parkasian Paul and Molly Thompson. Um, they were bullied as young girls and they've started a foundation called Be Kind and uh, all over the country now they're they're doing uh, things in schools and colleges but especially in schools uh, girl on girl bullying girls are, are, are committing suicide girls Absolutely. are hurting themselves Absolutely. very important topic it's yes so yeah. you know we we're able to do so that you're covering the whole thing i mean you're covering a, a lot of the very, very well balanced group of uh, uh, yes. Of men and women there. Now, uh, this Mother's Day uh, weekend, you have a special charity event. Yes. Tell me about that. Well, th these are the ones who are going to be honored. All the proceeds go to the four charities of the four honorees, and that's how we work. That's fantastic. Now, I can't let you go without talking about your jewelry mm. line because it's so inspiring, so beautiful, and so perfect. I just loved it. Um, I, could, I know the jingle inside my head. <laughs> um, what is the, the message behind the whole line of jewelry? Well, you my mother, um, who's no longer with us, um, she was from Holland and she was incarcerated when she was living in Indonesia in World War II by the Japanese in a mm. concentration camp for three and a half years. So when I was growing up, she couldn't really talk about that experience, but what she did talk about was the reason she survived and was you know, reasonably you know, normal afterwards was that she said there was always someone worse off than her. And so while she was nursing and helping other people, even though she didn't have medicines to really right, nurse them right. with, that it helped us to survive. And so I always took her, her sort of mantra to me was, darling, in life things will be challenging, things will be tough. And your instinct will be to close off your heart. But if you accept